Hi, my name is Aurora Morley, and I'm going to be talking about the physics behind painting. Today, I'm going to be talking about two kinds of painting. One of them is poor painting, and one of them is pendulum painting. Just in case you also wanted to do this project, here's a couple of the things you're going to need. You're going to need some sort of pour paint or acrylic paint mixed with some liquid medium. And you're going to need some sort of canvas or surface that you're going to be painting on. So the beginning is a little funky here because my camera decided to not record the first part where I was uh, pouring the black and white paint. So I used black and white paint because I read this article about a scientist who accidentally discovered this kind of painting in the early 1930s. So, when he found out that the paint could move in different ways like this and create weird patterns, he wanted scientists to explain to him why this was happening, why the paint was creating weird bubbles randomly. So, the scientists came up with a solution, and this next clip is what the scientists came up with as far as equations go. So not only did the scientists talk about the density of the paints, we could also talk about the distance that the paint traveled while on the canvas. Here's another attempt that I tried at pour painting where I figured out that while it was liquid paint, I didn't have enough at first to travel across the entire canvas. So in pour painting, knowing how thick or thin your paint is is important for knowing how far it'll travel distance-wise or displacement-wise. Next is pendulum painting. You're going to need a lot of resources for this one. If you actually want to do this one, you should probably find a tutorial, as I'm not the best at explaining. So for this painting, I actually didn't do it right. You're supposed to make a tiny hole at the bottom of a, cu a cup, and I made a big hole. So basically for this one, we could talk about the motion and force, or force due to gravity, or even acceleration due to gravity. A lot has to do with the weight in the cup, and how much paint is in there because the more paint you have the further it'll go the less paint you have the less distance it'll go and gravity has a huge part on how the design is created as well motion is also very important for this project because certain motions will create different patterns especially if you can actually do this project correctly this is actually what the project is supposed to look like as you can see for the one there's multiple different colors using multiple different motions and directions. Overall, there's a lot of different ways that painting can relate to physics. We've talked about things like motion, distance, uh, density of the paint, which I know isn't really a huge physics thing, but that's a science thing in general. We've also talked about weight, acceleration due to gravity, height, a lot of different topics that we've talked about throughout the year, seen throughout the year, relate to painting. And it's not just this kind of painting either, you can also talk about when using a brush, the distance the paint will go, or the motion of your paintbrush. 